I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and here today with me is Denis Laviolette, President and CEO of Goldspot Discoveries. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Charlotte. Thanks for having me. Great. Yeah, and we're here at Minds & Money London. Very exciting. It's the first day of the show. I know it's very early, but my first question is going to be, how, how is your sense of the mood here? What are you feeling so far? You know, it's an exciting time. I think the mood is... Uh, it, I think the things things have changed over the last couple of years, and I think uh, the optimism is growing, but suspiciously, kind of, because I think a lot of people know that a lot of money hasn't really trickled down into the junior space yet. Um, there's a lot more service providers here than I would have uh, thought, so it you know it, it tells me that everybody's sort of busy and working, but at the same time, uh, you know, in terms of uh, optimism. Um, it, the energy is great, and I think that uh, we're seeing something sort of turn in, in the business, but everyone's sort of anxious to see what the, when that's going to actually happen. Right, and I wanted to ask about gold specifically as well. 2019 has been kind of an interesting year for gold. Did you expect the price activity we saw? You know, um, I, I think everyone expected it at some point. When, when we were going to see it, um, was sort of the big question, and, and it's, it's kind of the, tip, the typical axiom with uh, with gold is um, gold bulls are right every decade, no matter what, almost. Uh, so eventually, you're going to you know see see prices rise. But in in terms of this year, I think it's an interesting year because we're seeing uh, um, a lot of turmoil on the financial side with governments and banks and central banks, things like that, and interest rates, um, you know, that narrative is starting to really turn a corner and make gold a lot more lucrative. And we're seeing, you know, a lot of institutional money sort of flood back in, but still playing through the ETF side of the business um, or the fund side. Uh, but long and short of it is, is that, you know, the, the, the price move here is, uh, I think, going to sustain itself into 2020. Um, so the, the, I guess the magic question will be when do we see that money trickle down into the, the space that we all know and love and get excited about, which is the, you know, the optionality plays and the expiration side and the and mid tiers and things like that. Yeah, definitely was going to ask your thoughts on what's coming in 2020 for gold. Obviously, you don't have a crystal ball, but you you seem fairly optimistic about it. No, I think 2020 is going to be a good year. I think it's going to continue. This is where we're going to see some M&A activity. Um, there's been a lot of companies in the mid-tier to uh, small major range that are building cash. Um, there's a, a heck of a lot of assets out there. The assets haven't changed all that much, but they're there. Um, and what we're, I think, going to see is um, probably into the spring of next year, um, some of the larger companies starting to make their moves M&A wise in the space. I don't know if they're going to get huge premiums just simply because those companies are trading so low right now that we're, we're going to see uh, acquisitions and M&A activity in the junior space happen. But that might be enough to kickstart people's interest in trying to get ahead of that and investing ahead of those M&A transactions. So there will be sort of like next year, I think it'll be a pivotal year where we're going to see some M&A transactions and hopefully that'll have a, a positive impact on on junior investing. Okay, so what I want to ask now is about how we've got all these things going on in gold, in the price, in the market. How does that all impact your company? You're not the typical gold company, definitely. No, we're definitely not. But I think right now, uh, given the fact that there's not a lot of uh, expiration success being had out there, expiration dollars are extremely hard to come by and they're extremely hard to raise. And so it's really raising the bar. And in terms of uh, a companies uh, from, a, from an expiration perspective, uh, risk, adver uh, you know, risk management is probably the most important um, you know, narrative that one could sort of bolt into their expiration story at this point. And I think from our perspective, that's what we offer. So AI, deep machine learning, and its impacts on vectoring in on reducing that risk profile with drilling. So increasing the odds that you're going to be successful. And I think that's help, helping to separate companies um, that are willing to embrace a new technology like ours um, to basically set them a apart from the rest of the pack and uh, and draw a little bit more investment dollars into their into their stories and I think we're showing that um, a lot of the companies that we've been working with are are getting a getting a lot of interest um, in a market where not very many companies get interest so um, what that's telling us is is that uh, you know expiration uh, mit risk mitigated by AI and machine learning is an important bolt on to a narrative um, and you know, m reducing risk in this space with regards to uh, drilling risk, 
reduces ultimately investment risk. So I think that that's uh, in, in markets like these, even though we see gold prices rise, but we don't really see money flowing into the junior space, um, you know, companies are looking to what can they do to set themselves apart? And that makes it's good business for us. Okay, so for those who might not know, can you give me a sense of how many companies you're working with and what the typical path for you looks like when you agree to work with a company? Yeah, so um, with Goldspot, we've got a couple of different uh, angles, uh, one of which is is really a service business uh, earmarked to larger companies, and they basically come up, they open up their portfolios to us, um, we get involved on an asset level. Um, and we'll do sort of one asset at a time or one package, one ground package at a time and sort of chew through uh, mountains of data that they've been acquiring over the years and uh, help them find more on that land package. Um, you know, typically that's paired up with a service fee or, a, you know, a, 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 a one-time sort of service contract. And then if we're successful and, you know, the, cl- the client, of course, enjoys that then or, you know, is happy with our work, then we would get subsequent clients or subsequent, uh, I should say, uh, projects down the line. Um, as for, and and as, with the junior space, we, we recognize that the junior space was, uh, you know, starving for capital. There's not really a whole lot of dollars. Those dollars need to go in the ground. So what we, uh, what we typically do is, is we look to partner up with those junior companies, uh, make a strategic investment in those companies, and then bring our team and our talents into those stories, uh, roll up our sleeves, and expand their geological horsepower by 30x in some cases, um, and just basically uh, and do all of that sort of geology, if you will, for, the, for those companies and, and all that work, and, um, and help increase the odds of, of a discovery. Uh, so you know it's it's a strict service model for the uh, for the large companies, and then a, um, a you know a strategic investment, and sometimes results in a royalty as well uh, for our investors. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was going to ask how the royalties aspect ties in, and it's it's through these junior companies. It sounds like. Yeah, it's definitely through the junior companies. I mean, uh, of course, there's uh, there's never. Uh, uh, anything set in stone. We're very flexible. We're a small company. We can negotiate lots of different deals. Um, we have talked to some larger companies about how to get royalty exposure within their larger portfolios. Um, perhaps not near mine, but um, you know, distally on their on, on on larger projects. And so there's definitely avenues that we could start um, acquiring royalties from bigger companies in that uh, respect. But right now, the royalties we get is simply uh, from the junior companies. Um, and it's just a, basically a way of building exposure. Our, our investors want exposure to the upside that a discovery may present. So whether that means uh, we take a strategic equity uh, holding in that company, coupled up with a royalty, in some cases a warrant, uh, things like that. So we, you know, if that company is successful, if our mutual exercise um, hits the big one, if you will, uh, then our, our shareholders will, will reap the reward because our company will reap the reward of that as well. Okay, so you've talked about this a little bit, but why is this business, your business, important in today's world? It seems like it all ties into availability of capital, which is low, and improving miners' results with the money that they have. Can you talk a little bit about that and maybe about what reaction you've had from companies? Do they realize this is important right now? Yeah, I think everyone is coming to the realization that I'll, t- I'll deal with the first part of that question, which or the last part I should say first. Um, everyone's coming to this realization that um, that expiration is risky. Computers can help make that a better process. We're, we're very, very good data collectors. We're very poor data analyzers as an industry. Um, so we've been, you know, siloing our data collection and siloing, siloing our analysis even. Um, oftentimes with subcontractors, uh, in-house with our geo teams. And then when it comes to putting it all together and really dovetailing all of those worlds together and, and gaining deeper insights and interrogating the data, that's where we fall short. And to say that not doing that, um, you know, is, is a good thing and like just, you know, that we've been doing enough and we don't need AI, we don't need deeper analytics to find p- those patterns is ridiculous. And I think everyone's sort of waking up to the fact that what we're doing is not a black box. It's not super special. It's not, you know, uh, anything crazy. Uh, it's not about what is the risk, uh, the percent uh, chance of having a discovery, and and what is the percent impact that Goldspot has with its clients. It's all about saying, you know, are is what we're doing adding value and de-risking the process of expiration? And the answer is yes, 100% of the time. What we do in, improves. Uh, upon what was done before. And I think that everyone's waking up to that. Um, in terms of the industry, 
uh, as a whole, we've seen a lot of AI, machine learning, analytics companies sort of sprouting up uh, around us. For four years, we've had basically nobody else uh, in sight. And this year, particularly in Australia, we've seen the sprout up of a couple of small shops that are offering very pointed services. But, you know, we're starting to see some more interest there. And then certainly from a larger company perspective, a lot of them have tried to do, you know, a multidisciplinary um, deep data analysis internally and they've had problems with finding the right people, the right recipes, the right formulas to do that and now they're coming and asking us uh, to get involved which I think is really, really good. Um, you know, particularly in the market uh, the expiration dollars are more precious than gold. It's really, really hard to get that money so to spend it wisely uh, is, is a top of mind for everyone. Okay, that's great. Just to close up, can you tell me what you have coming in 2020? What should we look for? You know, we're, uh, 2020, more contracts. Uh, so you'll see us uh, partnering up with other companies out there in the space, hopefully some discovery. So a lot of the interesting uh, projects that we were working on earlier in this year, mm -hmm. it takes some time. It obviously takes a long time to complete these projects and, and get their results out the door. And then further more time uh, to have those results actually drill tested. So, and then you have to wait, of course, once they are drill tested for the results to trickle in and, you know, follow up work. So um, what we're hoping for in, in, in early next year is to see some of those results come to market, which I think is going to be a positive uh, catalyst for Goldspot, uh, or at least a positive catalyst opportunity. And, um, and, you know, simply more markets, more or more deals being done, more royalties, things like that. So, um, you know, our story is an interesting one. There's a bit of an incubation period there, but we're hoping that in uh, next year we've got a lot of news flow c combined with, you know, signing up new clients and the news from the past clients that we've had this year. Okay, perfect. Well, I think we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for being here. It was great to speak with you. Once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and this is Danielle Laviolette with Gold Spot Discoveries.